We are now going to explain an algorithm that computes closed sets in lactic order. But first, let's introduce some notation. Suppose that we have A, a set of attributes, and MI, which is an attribute from M. So we define A plus MI as follows. We keep in A only those attributes that are smaller than MI. Remember, all our attributes are linearly ordered. So we keep in A only attributes that are smaller than MI. Then we add MI and we take the closure. So this is what we call A plus MI. So basically we take a prefix of A up to MI, then we add MI and we take the closure. This is A plus MI. Let me give an example. So suppose that A is ACDF and MI is attribute E. So if we use our um, binary representation, then ACDF can be represented by this uh, cross row. So we can represent ACDF as a cross row. We have a cross at the first position because this set contains A. We have a dot at the second position because it doesn't contain B and so on. And we want to compute A plus MI, where MI is E. So we want to compute A plus E. Um, the arrow points at, at the position of E. So this set ACDF, it doesn't contain E. The first thing we need to do is to remove all attributes that are greater than E. So that's what we get here. So we compute the intersection of ACDF with all the attributes preceding E, with ABCD. And we get ACD as a result. Then we add the attribute MI, which is E, and we take its closure. And that's going to be ACDF plus E. Well, we haven't specified the closure operator, so we can't compute any further right now. But, mm, well, the answer is going to be like this. It's A plus E is the closure of ACD. And now there's a crucial theorem that makes it possible to enumerate closed sets in lactic order. So, what it says is that if we have a set A and we want to compute a closed set that follows A in lactic order, then this set is going to be A plus MI, where MI is the largest attribute such that A is MI less than A plus MI. Uh, so, I'm going to prove it now, but let me explain it a little bit. So, what is A plus MI? Uh, we remove from A all attributes that are smaller than MI, we add MI, and we compute the closure. And then we want A to be MI smaller than this closure. When does it happen? It happens if and only if this closure contains no element that is smaller than MI. So, this theorem says that we can find the lactically next closed set after A by finding an MI such that when we remove from A all attributes greater than MI and then add MI to A and take the closure, this closure will not contain any new elements that are smaller than MI. So let's prove it. Let B be the lactically smallest closed set after A. We want to prove that B is of the form A plus MI for some MI such that A is MI less than B. Well, first of all, because B is lactically greater than A, there must be some attribute MI such that A is MI less than B. But this means that all elements from A that are smaller than MI belong to B. And MI also belongs to B. So this set, A intersection M1, MI minus 1, union MI, this is a subset of B. Okay, uh, what's the lactically smallest set that contains this subset? Of course, it is A plus MI, because A plus MI is just the closure of this set. 
So we have that A is less than A plus MI and A plus MI is less than B or less than or equal to B. A plus MI and B are both closed. And we say that B is the lactically smallest closed set after A. So it must be that A plus MI is in fact equal to B. So what we've just proved is that B is of the form A plus MI for some MI such that A is MI less than B. But we also need to prove that MI is the largest element satisfying this property. So suppose that we have two elements, MI and MJ, such that A is MI less than A plus MI and A is also MJ less than A plus MJ. And we also assume that MJ is smaller than MI. Well, then, by a proposition that we stated earlier, A plus MI must be smaller, lactically smaller, than A plus MJ. And so this shows that uh, the lactically smaller set after A is the one for which MI is the largest, satisfying this property. And this completes the proof of the theorem. Right, so let's use the theorem to give an algorithm that enumerates all closed sets for an arbitrary closure operator. So we have a closure operator that maps uh, a set X to X double prime, where X is a subset of some uh, finite linearly ordered set M, on which we have this closure operator defined. Uh, and we want to output all closed sets in lactic order. So the overall structure of the algorithm is very simple. We start by computing the lactically first closure, A. Uh, we output it. And then we produce, we call another procedure, which we'll define next, called next closure. And this procedure takes A and it returns uh, the lactically next closed set after A. Using the theorem we've just proved. And at some point it will generate the maximal uh, closed set. M, and then we assume that it returns this bottom symbol, or null, or whatever. So it somehow tells us that no closed sets remain to be generated. While this is not the case, we compute generating them. As soon as we've generated all of them, we stop. Right, so this is the overall structure. Now let's look at these two uh, sub-procedures, first closure and next closure. Well, first closure is really simple. It simply computes the closure of the empty set. And that's it. This is the lactically first closed set. Well, next closure must find the maximal M, the maximal attribute M, such that A is uh, M less than A plus M. And as, long, as soon as it finds this M, it knows that A plus M is the next closed set after A. So we go through all attributes M in re reverse order. We start with the maximal attribute and then go to the preceding one and then to another preceding one and so on. Well, there may be two cases for each such attribute. If M is already part of A, then we simply remove it from A. Because if we add it, nothing happens, the set will not change. If, however, the attribute is not uh, in M, then we form the union of A and M and take the closure of this union. This is going to be B, and this B is in fact A plus M. Well, why so? Because what is A plus M? We take all attributes that are greater than M and remove them, but we've done it before at the previous iterations of our for-all loop. So what remains in A at that moment, at this particular moment, are only attributes that are smaller than M. And then we take the closure. So this is in fact B at this point is A plus M. Uh, and now we have to check if A is M less than B. So we have to check if B minus A contains an element less than M. If it does contain an element less than M, then M is not the smallest element uh, in which B and A differ. And so A is not M less than B. 
But if B minus A contains no element less than M, then A is indeed M less than B. And so by the theorem, B is the electrically next closed set. And we return it. Well, if we go through all attributes and we don't find anything, then we return uh, null. And we signal that there are no more closed elements to be generated. Well, this is the algorithm, so let's look at how it works in practice. 